Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy, Brandy Boy, back at it again with another Fallout 4 video. And for this video, I'm going to be covering my top 10 favorite Fallout 4 mods from the month of December 2021. It's been a great year for Fallout 4 modding, and December was a fantastic month to top it all off. There was plenty of awesome, high-quality releases, including new armors, weapons, and even new gunplay mechanics to enhance your gameplay. I'll be showcasing them all right here in this video. So, let's go ahead and get into it. First up is perhaps one of the biggest releases of 2021, and that would be Sim Settlements 2 Chapter 2. It's a continuation of the Sim Settlements questline. I'm sure most of y'all know about Sim Settlements. It's one of the most popular Fallout 4 mods of all time. In short, it completely overhauls how you build settlements. Or, really, the building will take care of itself. You just have to tell your settlers what to do. Other than introducing new settlement building mechanics, the mod also adds in a quest line, which you will have to do in order to unlock more tools and features. Chapter 2 expands on the story with new quests and characters. In Chapter 2, you'll have to take the fight to the Gunners, which are now a much more menacing faction thanks to this mod. So, basically, it's like a DLC for a DLC. Even better, it's all free from the Nexus. And despite that, Sim Settlements 2 is one of the highest quality mods out there. It completely outshines all the content on the Creation Club for sure. I especially like the story, the characters, and their voice acting. Thing we found in your store, what is it? Some kind of radio machine? Can we use it to boost our comms? That's not what it's designed to do. I didn't ask what it was designed to do! What the hell are you doing? You could have fucking killed me! I said enough! Top-notch stuff right there. This could totally be a movie, but I don't want to spoil it at all, so I'll let y'all experience it for yourselves. Just know that the questline is definitely worth your while, and it's overall a great mod to have, especially if you're into settlement building and storytelling. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead and download it right now. But don't leave just yet. I've got nine more awesome mods for you. Next up is a revolutionary gunplay mod. It's called Uneducated Shooter, and it adds in leaning to Fallout 4. I know the name of the mod says Uneducated Shooter, but really, when using this new feature, you'll be demonstrating your gunfighting know-how. Leaning is a core mechanic in tactical shooters, and of course, it's an important tactic that many real-life soldiers and operators use in gunfights. Leaning allows you to get that perfect angle around a corner while exposing the least amount of your body as possible. A cover mechanic is already included in the vanilla game, but it only works in first person, and only if you're right up against a wall, which makes it rather limiting. But with the uneducated shooter mod, you won't have to worry about that. It works in first and third person. It's also completely freeform, so you can lean while moving and running, even sprinting, which looks kind of goofy, but trust me, it's tactical. The mod has two different types of leaning, one where the entire screen is rotated, which is similar to games like Tarkov. The other type is more subtle, the camera will pan over while only the gun rotates. This one is more akin to Rainbow Six Siege. I personally prefer the Rainbow Six type leaning because it's less jarring for me. You can make that change in the mod's any files. Here, you can also change the leaning to be toggleable, or even set it to be ADS only, which is what I like to do, so that I don't lean every time I try to activate an item. It's not just leaning though, the mod also adds in a new feature called Dynamic Height, which will allow you to crouch under obstacles. The vanilla game was missing this mechanic, so even if it looked like you could crouch under something, your hitbox wouldn't allow you to squeeze in. As a bonus, there's also a new gun inertia feature, which affects how your gun moves across the screen in first person. It aims to give the gun a sense of weight and speed when moving around. Lots of modded guns already have simulated inertia embedded into the animation, so it may be a bit much if more inertia is added on top of it. If that's the case, then you can always turn off the inertia by setting the X and Y rotation limit to zero within the mod's any file. Overall, this is a pretty epic mod that is rather small in its scope, but it sure does make a huge impact on how you approach gunfights. If you want more mods to enhance your gunplay, then you should also get the Simple Impact mod from the same author. It adds in new special effects, including sounds and visuals. There's now hit marker sounds, headshot sounds, kill sounds, and even kill quotes, all of which are taken from popular games. By default, the sounds are set to Modern Warfare, which is my personal favorite. Target neutralized! Tango down! 
For visual effects, there is now added camera shake and blur while shooting, which is meant to simulate recoil and muzzle effects. To make it even harder, the mod also disables recoil recovery, so your gun won't drop back down after firing. You'll have to do that yourself. If you don't like a couple of those features, then you can always adjust them or turn them off entirely within the mod's any files. So with both of those previous mods, you can now play as a tactical operator who sneaks into buildings with expertise and clears rooms with relative ease. But of course, you'll need some shiny new firearms to go along with that. Moving on to my favorite part, the gun mods. First up is the iconic SCAR-H, a Belgian-made battle rifle chambered in 762 by 51 It's a popular primary rifle that US troops have been using for over a decade, and now it's made its way into Fallout 4. It comes with an absurd amount of attachments. It's got pretty much everything you can think of. Receivers, barrels, foregrips, flashlights, lasers, grips, stocks, sights, magazines, and different color finishes. There's also a unique variant called the Warbird, which can be found at the Skylines Flight 1665. Meanwhile, the regular variants will spawn naturally through the leveled list, and here's how it looks out on the range. An absolutely beautiful rifle, and it's definitely one of my favorite gun mods now. However, I am having some trouble deciding which one I like more, the Scar-H or the next gun on this list. This is the M91 light machine gun from Modern Warfare, or as it's known in real life, the HNK MG5. This modern German machine gun is chambered in 762 by 51 and it's capable of laying down some serious suppressive fire. As if it's not already powerful enough, you can kit it out with a wide variety of attachments. Pretty much everything you see in Modern Warfare is what you get here, which includes receivers, barrels, stocks, sights, lasers, grips, foregrips, magazines, and perks, which will give you a unique ability. Even better, the mod includes some unique blueprints from Modern Warfare, but these are free and won't cost you any COD points. They won't show up in the world though, you'll have to craft the base gun and its variants from the Kim Station. Anyway, here's how this bad boy handles on the range. Now that is magnificent. The M91 is easily one of my favorite LMG mods now, and I'm sure y'all will love it too. After all, who doesn't like machine guns? The ATF apparently. But anyway, on to the next mod. This is the C93 Borchardt, an old German pistol which was made in 1893. It was the first ever semi-automatic pistol to successfully reach mass production, and it was the predecessor to the C96 and the Luger. It's chambered for the unique 7.65x25 cartridge, but in game here, it'll be using the 38. Surprisingly enough, this old relic has a fair amount of customization, which includes receivers, barrels, muzzles, grips, magazines, a red dot sight, and even the ability to convert it into full auto, because why not? You can find this sidearm as loot, but if you're having trouble with your luck, then you can always pick up a guaranteed drop at the Concord bus station. It may be old, but this antique still functions well. Here's how it looks. A very neat and unique firearm for sure. It really stands out and makes for a fine addition to the wasteland. We're not done with weapon mods just yet. I've got one more for you. It's called the Predator Knife. It adds in a big bowie knife, specifically the one seen in the movie Predator. Now that is certainly 
a knife. It comes with minimal customization. All you can do is upgrade its damage and change the finish of the blade. The best one is obviously Damascus. Before doing any of that, you'll first have to craft it at the Kim Station because it's a unique weapon and it won't show up in the level list. By default, it'll use the vanilla knife animations, but for me, I'm using a knife reanimation pack which makes a few changes. Nothing too complicated here. It's a simple knife mod, but I'm a Bowie knife enthusiast, so this iconic movie knife makes for a fine addition to my collection, and I'm sure y'all will enjoy it too. Moving on to armor now, this is the DevTech Ronin helmet. It adds in a modern tactical ballistic helmet, which looks rather menacing. It's just the helmet by the way, outfits are sold separately. Nonetheless, it's a great standalone piece of headgear. The helmet comes with some customization as well. There's two colors, black or desert, different lenses which give you a recon targeting HUD, and also the option for night vision goggles, which are functional if you use it alongside the West Tech Tactical Optics mod. To get this headgear, you'll have to craft it at a chem station, and after that, it's all yours. You can now patrol the waste as a tactical edgelord and be well protected while doing it. But if that's not your style, and you just so happen to be a filthy commie, then the Maska helmet may be more to your liking. This mod adds in a classic Russian steel helmet, which boasts some serious protection. This one is also just the helmet, so you should get a matching outfit to fit the theme. The helmet has 32 total paint jobs. Some are serious, while others are simply meme-tastic. Other than that, you can raise the visor of the helmet or take it off completely. This one's also unique, so you'll have to craft it at the Kim Station. That's about it. Another simple helmet mod, but it's a well-made one, and it's a must-have if you're a fan of Russian arms and armors. And lastly, but certainly not least, is a very handy utility mod that I think absolutely everyone should install. It's called the MCM Settings Manager. I'm sure most of y'all use the mod configuration menu. It's essential to manage the settings of various mods. The only problem with the MCM though, is that your settings won't save when starting a new game or switching to a different character. And if you have lots of mods like me, then it can be a hassle to redo all those settings. Fear not, because this mod fixes that. It allows you to save all those settings into a preset, which you can load later on a different save. You can even have multiple presets, in case you'd like to use different settings for different characters. It's one small change, but it can make quite a big difference because it'll save you lots of time. So that's why I think everyone needs to download this one. There's literally no reason not to. And with that, I'll wrap up my top 10 favorite Fallout 4 mods from December. I hope you all enjoy the mods as much as I do. If that's true, then make sure to give them an endorsement. And if you like this video, and want to see more like it, then make sure to mow down that like button, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and join the Discord to keep up to date on Fallout mods. And I'll see y'all in the next video.